going over to the garage to fit some dream parts to my ST170 powered Mark 1 Escort. If you're a Patreon, you would have already seen those parts. I've made this bracket up and the camera can now slide out without taking the media mod off the stand. Yesterday, I went to Herbie's Diner. Already got Esther out of her garage. Let's have a look at the new parts. Oh, you, that is not what I wanted to happen. I've also modified my jack a bit. I'm split up, unable to get the nut off, but really hot. Jack the axle up. Bare metal. Let's take Esther for a spin. Hello, and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes, and today I'm going to be going over to the garage where I store Esther, my ST170 powered Mark 1 Escort, to fit some dream parts to her. Now, if you're a patron, you would have already seen those parts. I've had them for quite a while, and yeah, I'm very excited to get them on the car. Now, if you're a patron, I also showed you recently another little change that I've made to my camera rig. So yeah, I want to show you guys on YouTube that change now. So apart from the issue that I've explained before with the microphone on the media mod, the other issue with it is that when you've got it attached to a stand and you need to replace the battery or the memory card, you have to literally take it all apart and take it off the stand completely because the way that it normally attaches to the stand is the flaps that are actually on the camera poke through the media mod and attach to the stand. So you can't slide the camera out with it attached to the stand. But if you set it up like I have here, then you can. So what I've done is I've made this bracket up, literally just a bit of alloy metal that I've bent and drilled a couple of holes. You can buy these fittings um, on eBay. So I've got one here that attaches to my normal sort of stand setup. And I've got this one here that slides onto the side mount. I've also got one of those side mounts that I can attach here so that then the media mod has still got two of them you know i've got one that i'm utilizing up here so yeah i'm gonna add the other one here and yeah with this set up like this it means that i'm able to undo this really difficult with one hand but yeah basically the camera can now slide out like that without taking the media mod off the stand anyway yesterday i went to herbie's diner for the latest horsepower at herbie's and as usual, it was an awesome meet. I didn't bother fully vlogging the meet. You know, I didn't even take any of my cars. I went in Roger the Plastic Fiesta with my beautiful girlfriend, Kat. Got to meet some people for the first time that I'd spoken to online a few times and got to catch up with some more familiar faces, including Mark II Mitch and his dad, Keith. And Keith actually gave me some bits that I used to take for granted when I used to work for Raw Mount. Yeah, these gloves and Black cable tyres were in endless supply when I used to work for Royal Mail. So yeah, massive thanks to you, Keith, for giving me those bits. Although I think you might have underestimated how big my hands are. Yeah, I think I'll give these gloves to my beautiful girlfriend, Kat, and she can use them in the garden. <laughs> now, I'm just waiting for a video to upload to YouTube, and then I'm going to jump in Maud, my Maud Mark II Escort, and head over to Esther's garage to crack on with today's job. But in the meantime, I'm going to let you see a couple of clips that I did capture when I was at Herbie's yesterday.
Hello, right, so I've been at the garage quite a while, just sorting some things out and readying myself for today's job. And I've already got Esther out of her garage and I've got her front end jacked up because today I'm gonna to be upgrading her suspension. But before I show you the new parts, I'll just show you what she's running at the moment. So Esther's front suspension setup consists of these Bilstein coilovers that came off of a Capri. They're not adjustable. Um, they've got stock shock absorbers inside them. The springs are lowered springs. I think they're three inch lowered springs. And then I ended up cutting a coil off them just to lower it a bit more. But yeah, these are literally, as I got them, I bare metal them and painted them. But yeah, didn't change the shock absorbers for adjustable ones or anything like that. They are stock Capri struts. I'm not sure exactly what Capri they come off. I think they're 2.8 injection, but they are the blue Bilsteins that everyone goes on about. Got these many years ago for a lot cheaper than they cost nowadays. And yeah, they've been absolutely fine up to now. So yeah, this car in general is running very basic suspension. All the modifications are what have been done by loads of people in the past. I'll just show you the rear setup. Quite awkward to get under here because the front end's jacked up, but yeah. The rear end, again, very simple, still running leaf springs. They are single leaf springs, which have been decambered by two inches. Got a set of one inch blocks in there as well. And it's just running Gaz Gold adjustable rear shock absorbers. Now the suspension kit that I've decided to upgrade to is something I've wanted for years. And I'm so glad I'm finally gonna be fitting them to Esther. So without further ado, let's have a look at the new parts. So as you can see, I've gone with these Gaz Gold adjustable coilovers for the front. And I've got another set of the adjustable shock absorbers for the rear. I've never actually had a set of adjustable coilovers before, so I'm really excited to get these fitted. You can adjust the stiffness of the shock absorber with this knob on the side, and you can adjust the ride height by basically adjusting where these platforms are. Um, this is the base platform for the spring and then this one locks it off. Now there was actually two options in terms of getting a gas kit for Esther and I think this kit was about £150 dearer than the other one. I'm not sure what all the differences are but I do know that this kit has a wider body and I think they might be lighter as well than the others. I'm not sure. I did have to buy a brand new set of stub axles. Um, I got these from Rally Design, but I ordered them through Gaz. Um, you can, I think, just send them a set of used front legs and then they can use the stub axles um, from them or buy brand new ones like I did. The great thing about these is they actually come with a dyno printout to show that they've been tested before they leave the factory. And in fact, this suspension has been tailored to suit Esther's spec. When I ordered them, I had to send loads of information about the car, you know, how much power she's running, what engine she's running. Um, I let them know that she's got lots of lightweight fiberglass and carbon fiber panels. Um, yeah, and then they literally tailor the suspension to suit the spec of your car. I'm not sure if the rear shock absorbers are tailored to the car or whether they're just another generic set, but I will be fitting these instead of the Gaz Golds that are already fitted because these are black, whereas although the ones fitted to Esther are black at the moment, Behind all the dirt, they're like a gold color. So yeah, I think it'd be better to have matching suspension. I don't think there's much more to say about this kit really, but there is one thing I'm gonna be adding to one of the front legs. Now you may have just seen in the clips that I've got this bracket and that basically goes on there like that. And it's held on by the two bolts that hold the steering arm on. I'm gonna be reusing the steering arms that are on Esther's current suspension and then you have another bolt that goes in to here. I don't have a bolt that's short enough. And to be honest, I was struggling to figure out whether that's an M8 coarse thread or an M8 fine thread. Um, but yeah, for now, I'll just bolt it on with the bolts that hold the steering arm on. And uh, we'll worry about that another day. And what this bracket is actually for is this speed sensor. So that will go in through the back there. And it's a magnetic sensor that picks up on the bolts that hold the hub to the disc and this is what's going to be controlling Esther's speedo because she's running a Mazda RX-8 6-speed gearbox that doesn't actually have its own speedo drive output. Another couple of things that come in the kit by the way 
got a spare set of the top nuts that go there. And these are the C spanners, I think they call them, to adjust the ride height. So yeah, really, really excited to have this kit going on Esther. I think it's about time I stopped talking and got this kit fitted to Esther. But before I do that, I need to remove her old suspension. Now, before I jacked Esther up, I did crack off these nuts at the top here because I'm pretty sure they're easier to undo when the weight of the car is on the ground. Front legs are attached to the inner wing by these three bolts, but there's other stuff to undo underneath first. I'm gonna remove the brake caliper and just tie that out of the way or lean it out of the way in such a way that the brake pipes aren't under strain. There's a ball joint down the bottom here, the track control arm ball joint, so I need to undo that. I need to undo the track rod end from the steering arm. This is the steering arm that will be bolted onto the new strut. But one thing I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna undo the anti-roll bar from here. And that should mean that I'll be able to get the front leg out without pressing down on this track control arm. So uh, yeah, quite a lot of stuff to undo. Oh, also there's a nut behind this cap that I need to undo to get the disc and the hub off. So yeah, quite a few things to undo. So I'm just gonna cue the music, get my tools out and crack on with it. not what I wanted to happen. And luckily, the pipe's long enough that it was able to hit the floor. Oh my God, that was so loose. What idiot done that up? taking this opportunity to remove the strut brace brackets because uh, with the ST170 engine in um, basically this needs to be a bit higher if it's going to work so uh, yeah I could set about getting someone to modify it for me. Now because these springs are ridiculously short and the shock absorbers are standard length I don't need to put any spring compressors on it or anything because um, yeah I need to get the top mounts off I don't actually know if this is going to fit the new <laughs> suspension yet. So this nut has got like a little shoulder on it that fits perfectly in there. So it's looking good. That seems to go on there all right. So looks like we're good. Right, let's remove the steering arm from the old shock. I think it goes that way. Lee Wallace, if you're watching, don't worry. I'll be using your steering arm soon. All right, I suppose I might as well bung this gas strut on now and button everything up. So it's just gonna be a reversal of what you've already seen. Let's do it. Passenger side coilover is now fitted. I've actually lifted these platforms up a bit because I'm conscious that I'm going to run out of time today and I don't want no issues trying to get my car in the garage. But yeah, everything's done up now, apart from the anti-roll bar. I'm going to do the other side before I do that up. Now I'm going to bang out the driver's side one off camera. Yeah, I should be able to knock it out really quick if I'm not worrying about filming it. So I'll chat to you in a sec. Hello, right into the next day. Now yesterday I did manage to get the driver's side front gas coil over on and then the clip that I made after that, I've got no audio on that clip. Yesterday I was using one of those wired lav mics and yeah, that one isn't working now. So it must have failed at some point yesterday. So I'm going back to using the actual DJI um, wireless mic. Now, despite my best efforts yesterday to leave the front ride height really high, to make it easy to get Esther back into her garage. She was still sitting really low. 
and I really, really struggled to get her in the garage. I should have just jacked her up and adjusted that one up, um, but by then it was getting dark, so yeah, I just struggled to get her in with blocks of wood, and uh, I'm gonna have to struggle to get her back out again today. But I think I'm gonna try and make some modifications today to my garage, essentially, to uh, make it easier for me to get her in and out of the garage while she's sitting really low. Now, unfortunately, my beautiful girlfriend, Kat, is working today. I thought she had a day off today for some reason. So I'm gonna be at the garage on my own with a main objective of getting the rear gas shock absorbers fitted. But yeah, I'll catch up with you when I get to the garage and once I've pulled Esther out of the garage. Now, one good thing about the fact that she is sitting so low, she looks awesome. So I can't wait to show you that. So I'll speak to you in a sec. Right, so it's been another day where I've been around the garage for a good few hours before I've actually started doing anything car related. I've been making some alterations to the security post in my garage to try and get Esther over it now that she's running a bit lower. I've also modified my jack a bit, just shaved it down <laughs> there because I was unable to get it under Esther's front splitter even with the front wheels on these bits of wood. So yeah, already experiencing the downfalls of having a lowered car if my alterations don't allow her to get over the security post today i'm just going to adjust the suspension up but i don't want to do that yet because i want to show you what it looks like now that she is sitting lower at the front anyway my main objective today is to fit the new rear shock absorbers and i've already had some grief so whilst the rear wheels were still on the ground i had a go at undoing the nuts that hold the rear shocks in. You can see that that side, I've managed to get the nut off. You know, you, you get the gun on the nut and the shock itself is spinning rather than the nut. On this side, I actually tried to put mole grips on the top and undo the nut with a spanner, but it just kept slipping in the mole grips. Eventually the bit broke off the end and I was unable to get the nut off. And then on this side, I just put the gun on it and I just kept going for ages and ages and ages and ages and ages. And the nut did eventually come off. So I'm hoping that the same will happen with this one. It's definitely moved up a couple of threads, but yeah, really need to get that nut off. <laughs> yeah, at the moment, I'm just waiting for my gun to cool down because it got really hot. Now, as I'm sure you've all guessed, I am planning to put Esther's current Gaz Gold rear shocks onto Maud eventually, but with what's happened to this one, it might mean that that one's ruined, but on Esther's new Gaz Gold rear shocks, they actually sent them to me with a top eye as well as a bottom eye, and then they were able to just send this piece, but with a thread rather than an eye, so that I could convert them so that they're the correct shocks. So I should be able to get some ends like this, but with a thread, and then I can replace the top part of these shocks, and they should be usable. But yeah, right now, I just want to get these off of Esther. <laughs> Got the nut off. <laughs> so I'll just let the gun cool down again. And then we just need to take off the bottom nut on each shock absorber and we can just pull them out. Put the adjuster on the inside. Because the shock absorber isn't actually going into the hole. Jack the axle up. Hopefully, Get it in that hole. It's poking through, but not enough. I have to somehow extend the shock. I'm gonna hold the top of the shock up whilst I let the jack down. So it stretches out the shock absorber, and then jack it back up. Still holding the, the shock absorber extended. There's a little bit more poking through now. Just put the washer and the nut on. It's a couple of threads. All right, so the brand new Gaz Gold rear shocks are now also fitted. I still need to finalize the top nut inside the car, obviously. But yeah, when I'm getting her back on her wheels later, I should be able to do that. Got a, a nut and the washer on there, so the threads are gonna stay in the holes in the car, at least. Now I wanna turn my attention back to the fronts. I wanna loosen these hubs off a little bit um, and just go around and double check that all the nuts are done up tight from yesterday and then I'll get her back on the ground and you can see how cool she looks now that the front end is slightly lower. All 
All right, it's been a couple of hours since the last clip and Esther is now back on all four wheels. And look how cool she looks now that the front end is slightly lower than it was before. This is definitely the highest I wanna run it. I do wanna bring it down a little bit more, but until I've driven her on the road, I'm not gonna be able to make my final decision on her front ride height. I redone the tightness on the front hubs. I actually found my Haynes manual and it said do them up to 27 foot pounds, I think it was, and then back them off 90 degrees. So that's what I did and put a new split pin in. The rear shocks were actually quite easy to do up in the end. I was just able to put a jack underneath one side at a time and from underneath extend the shock up and then when I had a look in here, there was enough thread poking through for me to take the nut and the washer back off and then put the rubber washer and nut back on. And I've actually done them up so that the nylon on the nylock nut is just past the first thread. Maybe that'll make them easier to remove in the future if I ever have to. Well, another thing I was having a look at, you'll remember in a recent video, I fitted this brand new alternator and when I fitted it, it seemed like it wasn't charging properly. But today, I noticed that if I increased the revs slightly, then the alternator was charging the battery at 14.3 volts. So basically, I just tweaked the idle ever so slightly. It's probably gone up by about 100 revs. And yeah, that really did make the difference. I know loads of you are saying that I was measuring the resistance in the earth wire wrong. But yeah, that's, that's just the way that I thought you do it. But yeah, today I just tested the voltage of the battery and now it's at 14.3 volts at idle. Still do need to put that sleeving stuff around the wires, but you know, I'll worry about that another day. I'm sure there was one more thing I found when I was putting this car together. Oh yeah, the rear inner arch has got a patch that's uh, bare metal. So the tires obviously rub in, but it's like right up here. Now I reckon that probably happened when we were going full send on the mountain roads in Northern Ireland. The suspension on this car really isn't set up for roads like that. And I think if I take Esther back to the Summit Run and Show next year, I'll probably raise the rear suspension and the fronts, which is obviously easier now I've got coilovers, before I go over there, just to make it uh, a bit more ready for those mountain rally roads. I think what I'm gonna do now is take Esther for a quick spin. As I've said loads of times, I don't really like driving her in the wet, but she is still filthy and she needs a wash anyway, so. Yeah, let's test out this new suspension. All right, so I'm not gonna go for a long drive. It's gonna probably start getting dark soon. The days are getting shorter and shorter. Summer is over. Now, first impressions, it actually drives all right, considering it's definitely gonna need an alignment, but I'm gonna need to make my mind up on the ride height before I go and get an alignment. I've set the shock absorbers to about three quarters stiffness, so quite stiff. Um, but yeah, it drives lovely. I did already test to see if I can get the car into the garage, and I can't. So I'm going to need to make some more adjustments to my garage to get it in, because as I've already said, I want to run this car a little bit lower than it is now at the front. Um, but yeah, obviously you need to get it in and out of the garage. Oh, this car is so fun in the wet. <laughs> I remember years ago, I said I'd never drive this car in the wet under no circumstances, but you know what? There's no point building these cars unless you're gonna enjoy them. Definitely not gonna drive it all through winter or anything like that. And I'm only really driving it now because it needs a wash underneath anyway. And because I wanted to try out the new suspension. This car's so much more controllable and predictable than Maud is. You know, even in the wet, so confidence inspiring. I just wish I could get Maud to the point where she feels like Esther. Even though I do have some upgrades coming that's gonna make her drive better, I do worry that realistically, if I want her to feel like Esther, she's gonna have to be put on some lighter wheels. The banded steels are just stupidly heavy. But yeah, this car, it just, it just goes where you want it to. You just point it, you know, it, it, it slides easier because it's more power, it's lighter, but it's so much more predictable, I find as well. But to be fair, Maud is hanging compared to this car. <laughs> 
It looks like we're still in rush hour. It's about 20 past six at the moment. I was hoping it would be a bit more clear on the roads. Regular little spot down here, out the way of the rest of the world. Definitely need to uh, <laughs> soften the suspension. It's way too stiff. So I think I'm going to get Esther back to her garage now, put her away, and then I'm going to jump in moored and head home. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing next around the garage, but it's probably going to be giving Maud some TLC. I've got loads of parts to fit to her. So yeah, it's about time I pulled my finger out. So you'll be able to see that in the next video. But if you thought this video was any good, please do give it a thumbs up and a share. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Click subscribe if you're new to keep up to date with all my future uploads. And check the links in the description to my social media, my own website, where you can grab yourself some official Marcus Hayes merchandise and check out my regular blog posts. I'll leave a link to my Patreon in the description for any of you guys that want to jump on that. Massive, massive thanks as always to all my patrons. I really, really appreciate your support. I'll leave my email address in the description for anyone who wants to contact me. But other than that, until next time, thanks for watching.